What is up friends and fellow anti-netters? What I want to share with you today is how to actually use and make use of a Zettelkasten, which is the most powerful knowledge system for developing your thoughts, all of your ideas, the things that come to mind while reading, and how to do this if you are actually a freaking busy person, a normal person that has a life, a career, family, but yet you want to make use use out of this freaking phenomenal knowledge system, the Zettelkasten. That is what I'm going to show you how to do today. I'm going to show you the workflow, how to do this, and let's get crack a lacking, okay? So I'm going to pull over my camera over here, right over to my desk, and we're just going to dive into this, okay? I'm going to zoom in so you can kind of see the cards and all this. So the workflow and what I'm going to be using is this book that I'm reading right now. It is called uh, Some Sort of Epic Grandeur. It's by... Uh, this guy, Matthew Bricoli, B-R-U-C-C-O-L-I, and there's an important reason um, that I'm pointing this out, okay? And so, you know, I've been reading this book with, you know, kind of like at nights and kind of for pleasure and enjoyment and been going through it with no, like, agenda of actually writing and creating a book about this material, but just purely because I enjoy it. And, you know, that's, uh, I think, a misnomer that a lot of these, you know, productivity freaks and Obsidian fanboys have and, you know, with linking their notes and doing all that stuff is they think they have to, you know, they kind of intermix between uh, essentially what knowledge development really is and what Nicholas Lumen really did and, you know, some productivity junkie and getting things done fanboy thing. And it's not, you know, you can actually and you should actually, just like Lumen, he would read using a bib card like this. So while you're reading, you, this is acts as your bookmark, okay? So basically when I'm reading, like at night, you know, I'll have this, this, and what's what's beneficial is I like read at night with, I'm kicking back, maybe smoking a cigar, maybe sipping some Chardonnay on ice and don't ask, but yes, that's the real man's fricking drink. And I'm like laying back, lounging, and the benefit of doing that is it makes you very, very selective about what you actually pause to actually write down. Um, I'm on, let's see what page I'm on. I'm on, I'm on page 367 of this book and I've only written down this many ideas. Like, and the reason is, is because I want to have the ideas actually earn their right for me to actually, you know, fricking put down my iced Chardonnay and take out a pen and fricking write down the idea that came to mind. Okay. So that's how you want to read. You want to read very selectively. If you're a busy person, then, you know, at the end of the day, you don't want to freaking work. And so you want to be able to read and enjoy. So that's the first thing. You want to read with a card like this. This is called a bib card. And you'll know this if you've uh, read, you know, my book, Antinette Zettelkasten. You'll already be familiar with this. Um, on the bib card, on the back, I have the bibliography details. Okay, so I've got Brew Coley, comma, Matthew. That's, you know, the author's last name, first name, and then the title, and the bibliography stuff, the boring stuff. I'm talking about, you know, second revised edition, University of South Carolina Press, the year, blah, 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 right? The stuff that I used to freaking fall asleep at, you know, in the classroom when my teacher would tell me back in the day, you know, of uh, how, how to actually use a bibliography, that type of stuff. That's what I actually freaking spend my adult life doing and writing down on a card. Anyway, um, there's benefits of doing this, okay? So once you have that, in the top right corner, I put B dot. B stands for the bib box. So I file this in the bibliography um, section of my Zettelkasten, this beast. This is a real Zettelkasten, not your freaking, you know, digital fap boy Zettelkasten, which just revolves around linking notes and, you know, screwing around with metadata. Here's my bib box. This is all organized by author's last name. So after I'm done reading the book, I'm going to file that card in the bib box, okay? So... Now that we've got that squared away, I want to actually show you how to actually, you know, process and use and work with a Zettelkasten if you have a freaking life. So, you know, let's say um, the next day, okay, let's say I'm like at like the, the previous night, I read page 93 and I wrote down failure, rejection, okay? So notice how I didn't write down a quote. I didn't write down and spend a ton of time writing down, you know, whatever, whatever this idea is, okay? So that 93 means page 93. And failure means it's something about failure and rejection. So let's freaking figure out what the heck this was, okay? So the next day, I'll get to my office after reading, and I'll go to page 93. And on this page, I'm just going to read it out to you. It says, uh, let's see, like right around here. It says, um, during the spring of 1919, 
F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote 19 stories and accumulated 122 rejections. Uh, his only sale was a revision of the 1917 lit story, Babes in the Wood, which the smart set uh, took, the magazine took for $30. Basically, this concept, this period in, in Fitzgerald's life that I was reading about, he basically doubled down and said, screw it, I'm locking myself in a room, I'm quitting this boring nine to five job that I have in advertising, and I'm just gonna continue to write. And he literally just wrote for like this entire time. This is before he was even famous. This is when, you know, he was be before he was even an official author, before he even got published. And he wrote and got 122 rejections and he put them on his wall. So when I wrote down failure and rejection, I was like, okay, this is a fascinating story that I want to be able to tell and tell people about um, when I want to write about failure and rejection. So instead of me, you know, belaboring and writing a ton of notes and excerpting this whole thing here's what i do i basically the next day i spend like you know i don't know a minute maybe i go to my index which is in my anti-net zettel costume and i'm just gonna pull it out normally i don't pull it out but since i'm teaching you shit weasels how to actually use this system i'm gonna pull it out and take time and actually freaking show you how this powerful badass system works okay so what i do is i just navigate over to the f this is my index okay and i'm gonna go find the word failure because that's a fantastic um fantastic term i guess that i want to write about when you know when i come across something that i want to write about for failure and so as you can see i have a bunch of entries in here some of these entries point to the main section of my Zettelkasten, which has like more elaborate writing about, you know, the concept of failure in like certain sections. So what I'm going to do is right over here, as you can see, I put down a second card because I ran out of room on the first card for failure and it says failure two. So what I'm going to do is because I'm a busy person and we're talking about how to actually freaking use a Zettelkasten if you're a busy person, I am simply going to put down what is called an XREF, an E-X-R-E-F, external reference, okay? And I'm gonna put down, I like to use red pen, a badass Mont Blanc, okay, red pen. Um, why? Because it's a badass Mont Blanc red pen, and for me, it just signals that it's an external reference, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I wanna say, you know, anytime I want to write about the concept of failure, it, this is like just-in-time processing. I'm gonna go and review any of my you know external references and say oh yeah okay there's a great concept that i can then write about when writing about you know the concept of failure like maybe in an issue of the scott shepherd letter you know my physical monthly newsletter i can write about like how you know famous authors just went through a period where they're like screw it let's do it i'm gonna buckle down and write and failed like and got 122 rejections so what i'm gonna put here is i'm gonna put um you know Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald, rejected, 122 times. And then I'm going to put colon, and then I'm going to put B dot Brucoli. You see that? Coley, comma, and then I'm going to put the page number. So as you can remember, the page number was 93, right? 93. Boom. Okay, cool. Now, normally I would be done, but for best practices, I want to also put, I want to also file this, um, you know, most of the time, like, that's it. I'm done. Like, I'm a, using Zettel Costin as a busy person. I'm done. I'm done for the day. Now, I know that next time I want to write, write about failure, I've got all of these kind of really important concepts brewing. Cause it's not just like as simple as freaking swiping your finger using Kindle highlights and, you know, collector's fallacy, all that bull crap, right? Like collector's fallacy is made up. So, you know, we're collecting all this knowledge and it's valuable because we're collecting it in analog form. And this is exactly what Nicholas Lumen, the originator of Zettelkasten did. And it doesn't work in digital. Like you can't just like, you know, slap in and do all of this highlights and excerpting because what happens if you use a digital workflow, you'll end up also selecting the stuff that is not important, okay? So that's the benefits of using a bib card and analog and reading using physical knowledge tools. So what I wanna also do just for best practices is I also wanna file that in rejection, okay? So 
I'm going to go over, we're going to go back over to my little index here, and I'm going to go look up under R, let's see if I can find rejection. Let's see if it's already in there. Okay, so R E, oh, holy crap, freaking A. This is hilarious. Um, okay, so I have rejection in there. I wasn't expecting this. So rejection and dating. You see, like back in 2016, when I was a, a single and badass in my own mind, I read a book on dating. <laughs> and I guess I have, you know, some, uh, you know, lessons in there. And then I have like tactic for handling rejection and persuasion. That links to my main box. But since I'm a freaking busy person these days and I have a nine to five job, meaning a nine to five job of making videos for my anti-netters and then people that aren't anti-netters, they're, you know, Obsidian Bubble Graph boys, aka shit weasels. Um, because I'm a busy person doing that, I am going to not create and put this in a main section of my zettel cost, and I'm simply going to do this. I'm going to say F. Scott Fitzgerald, or Fitzgerald, because I know who that is, rejected, 1.22 times. And then again, V dot Brew Coley, comma, 93. Boom. I'm done. All right. I'm going to then put this back in my index. Let's see here. We'll zoom out here. Whoop. So you can see this. This is uh, this exciting stuff, ladies and gentlemen. This is what happens when you freaking note cards so hard. Motherfuckers want to find you. All right. No card so hard, motherfuckers want to find me. For a second, they're going to find me. Hopefully, you guys know what that song is. Um, all right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Okay, we're going to file this right here. Boom, we're done. That's it. So that's essentially it. This allows you to read using physical knowledge tools and then be able to install ideas that then when you're writing about failure or rejection, you can then resurface and write about on demand. And so, you know, for me, that's pertinent because every single month, as you may know, I write a physical monthly newsletter teaching knowledge development, writing, and marketing, right? And I write it out by hand, why? Right? Because I'm a badass. And in doing that, if I come across a concept I want to write about like failure right here, guess what I do? I head over to my second mind, my brain, my analog brain. I look up the word failure and I get all of these freaking ideas that I've since forgotten about you know, that are kind of in long-term memory and, you know, just basically have the book handy, have the book nearby, which I always do, and then write about it. And that's pretty much it. So that's the workflow that you want to adopt and use if you are a busy person, yet you want to use a Zettelkasten. In summary, you basically read with a bib card, you create a term, you outline it, and then you go straight to your index, write it in there, and move on. All right? Hope that helps. And always remember to stay crispy, my friend. Peace.